hello students today the topic of discussion is qualitative determination of an unknown compound we have a different unknown compound and we will learn here how to proceed so that we can get to know which functional group or which compound it has the unknown compound is the learning outcome is after understanding the basics of qualitative analysis you will be able to predict the probability of the functional group that may be present during the qualitative analysis and after the confirmatory test you can also tell which actual compound it is so we'll start with the preliminary investigations that first includes physical appearance and color here this is the unknown compound as you can see it is a colorless compound so we will write it is a colorless liquid the state is liquid it can be a low molecular weight containing aldehydes ketones esters etc odor is odorless it shows the absence of nitrobenzene benzyl dehyde lower aliphatic acids aromatic hydrocarbons etc when this unknown compound was dissolved in the lab in water it was insoluble then we tried with 5% hcl it was also insoluble in that then it was tried for 5% naoh it it was insoluble in 5% naoh also then we moved to concentrated h2so4 and it was found that it is readily soluble in concentrated h2so4 and along with the solubilization it developed orange color it was a characteristic behavior so going through all the solubility parameters we conclude that it may be a group 5 a group 5 compounds that has that contains unsaturated hydrocarbons aldehydes ketones esters ethers anhydrides and alkylides i have told you in the previous video about the solubility parameters and in how many groups the compounds are categorized so after the solubility criteria we we inferred here that may be group 5 compounds are present so after this we'll see the acidic or basic nature we saw that there is no change to the litmus paper it can be that because it is insoluble in water what we do to check the acidity and basicity we take the compound and we dissolve it in water since it is insoluble in water so chances are there that the the uh, the experiment is not proper it is miscalculated it can be so there is no change to litmus paper so we have no clear cut idea about the acid character or the basic character of the given compound then we took 5% nh co3 and we saw that it is insoluble and no effervescence found which indicates that carbon dioxide has not been evolved and acids are absent now in the preliminary investigation we'll carry out the aromatic or aliphatic nature investigation in which what we will do we'll take the compound in the spatula and we'll directly heat it over the flame what we saw that is the 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 it we got the sooty flame it tells us that it's a aromatic compound we uh, we have another test for aromaticity and aliphaticity that is nitration test we took the sample and we added 1 ml of hno3 and 1 ml of concentrated h2so4 and we heated it over the flame and we'll pour it it into the beaker that contains the water what we are seeing here the color has changed to yellow that shows presence of aromatic compound means the com the known compound is aromatic in nature moving to the test for saturation or unsaturation first we'll do the bromine water test 
we'll take the test tube we'll put bromine water shake what we see the color of bromine is not discharged then the compound is saturated we have the different test for saturation or and saturation that is beer reagent test in that again what we are seeing that the pink color of potassium permanganate has not been discharged that means the compound is saturated now after the after the the all the tests of preliminary investigations will carry out the detection of elements will directly take the compound and fuse it with the sodium metal taken in the fusion tube and will follow the procedure that will firstly heat then we will plunge the fusion tube into the distilled water then we'll saturate it so that the volume constant the, the volume reduces to the half and then we'll filter it what we'll get after the filtration that is the lysagenase extract or sodium fusion extract then we'll take the sodium fusion extract and we'll start first with the test for nitrogen we'll for, we'll add 1 ml of ferrous sulfate solution shake first no dark greenish gray precipitate of ferrous hydroxide is formed now with the same sample we'll add 1 ml of dilute sulfuric acid and heat it no formation of prussian blue precipitate means all the tests are negative so nitrogen is absent now we'll test the sulfur presence we'll take three drops of freshly prepared sodium nitroprusside solution shake it no appearance of brilliant purple color that shows the uh, absence of sulfur now again to the same uh, uh, to the same sample we will take and we'll do the perform the next experiment that is lead acetate test in which we'll take 1 ml of dilute acetic acid and few drops of lead acetate and heat it no appearance of black precipitate this shows sulfur is absent now we'll test the halogen means that is um, chlorine bromine iodine what we'll do we'll take the nitric acid and 1 ml of silver nitrate and add to the sample shake it no white or yellow precipitate form this shows absence of halogens okay so nitrogen is absent sulfur is absent and halogens are also absent so no need to carry out the test for nitrogen or sulfur but here i have shown for your reference that nitrogen and sulfur both are present after this what we conclude that no special elements are present that is nitrogen sulfur or halogens are absent in the given unknown compound now we'll test the neutral ferric chloride solution what we'll see that after the addition of ferric chloride no purple color has formed so phenolic group is absent so up to this we have done all the preliminary investigation solubility analysis and special elements detection what we conclude after the preliminary investigation of elemental analysis and solubility analysis that the compound showed positive saturated aromatic behavior the compound is saturated as well as aromatic the compound is insoluble in water which shows the absence of alcohol and acids acids also because alcohol because it is not soluble in water acids because it shows the negative nh co3 sodium bicarbonate test the some compound is soluble in concentrated h2o sulfur and had absence of special elements that i have already shown you shown you during the during the uh, videos this shows that it belongs to the group 5 this it is a group 5 compound here i am attaching you uh, the link of the description uh, about the different groups of the compound group 1 to group 7 you can go there and you can again see how i have concluded that it is a group 5 element this removes the possibilities of phenols because it it has not developed purple color carboxylic acids because it has given negative in a sodium bicarbonate test alcohol because it is insoluble, insoluble in water amines nitro and imines because no special elements are present in all amongst them nitrogen is there carbohydrates because it is also insoluble in water and insoluble in water and no charring is observed when the compound was taken on the spatula and heated over the flame so what we are left with the possibilities of aldehydes ketones esters or anhydrides so we'll see first the esters for esters we have the fruity smell test that will take the compound 
and add 2 ml of ethanol and few drops of sulfuric acid what we observed that there has there no fruity smell has come so it indicates that ester is absent we have another test for ester that is phenolphthalein test in that we take the sample and then add 3 ml of dilute noh and 1 ml of phenolphthalein no the color of the phenolphthalein has not been discharged means after the reaction it should form an acid that will react with the phenolphthalein and should uh, should discharge the uh, pink color of the phenolphthalein but that has not formed because it is not an ester so we conclude that ester is absent now we have the possibilities of aldehydes or ketones aldehydes and ketones are together called carbonyl group so we'll see for the carbonyl group we have 2,4 dnp reagent test and sodium bisulfite test what happens with 2,4 dnp reagent test that is we added we shaken and we found that a orange red precipitate form this shows carbonyl group is present then we'll have another test for carbonyl group that is sodium bisulfite test we'll take the sample we'll add 3 ml of sodium bisulfite test sulfite solution shake it what we observe white precipitate has formed this also indicates that carbonyl group is present so when the carbonyl is present now we have the possibility that aldehyde can be present and ketones can also be present so we'll see the the presence the test for aldehydes is the compound is the unknown sample provided to us is aldehyde or not we'll do the skip reagent test and what we say no red color is restored that shows aldehyde is absent then we have another test for aldehydes that is helling's reagent test what we see no formation of red precipitate that also shows us that aldehyde is absent so this two experiments shows that it is a ketone that is present in the given sample now we mostly we see that in the in the laboratory we give students acetophenone as a ketone ketone sample so we have two confirmatory tests for acetophenone one is sulfuric acid that i have already told during the solubility test the compound is soluble soluble in concentrated h2so4 and orange color has developed so we saw that orange color is produced so we can conclude that acetophenone can be present we will confirm with another experiment that is a confirmatory test for acetophenone what we will do we will take kmno4 and uh, and uh, heat it and cool and heat it and after some time we will add dilute hcl and try to acidify then we get a white precipitate what this we conclude after this that the unknown sample is acetophenone so i think after this video you can be able to understand how to proceed during a qualitative analysis and if you know the confirmatory test you can write the compound name if you are have you have no idea about the confirmatory test you can directly write in the report that if aldehyde is present you write presence of aldehydes have been found presence of ketones have been found but but uh, without confirmatory test you can't write that it is an acetophenone or it is a benzophenone you can't write like that okay so thank you so much